Hey, while you in the first five seconds of the video, go ahead, like and subscribe. Hello, Israel. This is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right. I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. Hey, my brother, you got a second? Uh, well, I got a little bit because I got to start work right now. You got something? What's that? You got to be at work. Uh, right now, like, uh, one right now. Well, right now, you keep up with the time. I got some questions for you, man. What's your nationality? Uh, Mexican. Mexican, right? Mm -hmm. right so, you show you the Bible, right? You read the Bible, you believe in the Bible? Yeah, I do. Now, I'm going to just be straight up. You're not going to find Mexican in the Bible. Right. So now the question is, who are him? Who, really, who am I? Because the Bible talks about a race of people, right? right. Let me show you your, your true nationality. This sound right here. Because we are the Israelites. We teach that so-called blacks and Hispanics. Right. That's our true nationality. We're not Mexican. We're not Argentinian. We're not Dominican, we're not Cubans. Because you have all these Spanish nations. What's the difference between a Mexican and a Guatemalan, really? Nothing much. Nothing much. But yeah, we're classified as such Guatemalan Hondurian. But according to this sign right here, you will be an Israelite from the tribe of Issachar. That's your true nationality. That's your true God given name. Issachar derived from Aztec. Issachar, Azteca. The Aztec Empire. Because the Aztecs, they was a, a ruling kingdom. But what happened to the Aztecs? They didn't disappear. I'm looking at, uh, at you right now. You don't speak. The same people that call themselves Aztecs now call themselves Mexican. Let me show you something. Let's get Deuteronomy 28. Let's talk about history. The Bible is also a history book. Let's go to Deuteronomy 28, 15. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken, unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So I know you gotta go to work, right? But the Lord said through Moses that if you didn't keep my commandments, showing you that he never gave us religion, because you have all these churches, right? But look at the state of the neighborhood, nothing's changed. So there's no spirit in those churches because they're not teaching the truth. They're not teaching us our true identity. You go to church all your life and still call yourself a Mexican. But really, you are an Israelite from the tribe of Issachar. Henceforth, he said, if you didn't keep my commandments, that's what he gave us, these, these people right here. He gave us commandments to keep. Things to do and things not to do, right? And he said, if you didn't keep my commandments, all these curses will come and overtake us as a nation of people. Let's get the curse of the Mexicans, right? Let's go to Deuteronomy 28, same book. Chapter uh, 47. Is it 47? Verse, verse 48. Uh, 40, uh, a nation, the Lord shall bring up uh, 49. Verse 49. Read that. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far. Right, so you look, he said, the Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far. Think about the Aztecs, right? You had places like Tenochtitlan, a ruling empire. You had uh, all these uh, city states. But who came there outside of the uh, Americas and conquered the Aztecs? Spanish, but let me show you that's Bible prophecy and, and the root cause of that because we didn't keep the commandments Because what was we doing? We were sacrificing, we was worshiping all these gods, right? And we were sacrificing each other, we was doing a sacrifice and sacrificing one another to these uh, sun god, right? All these things, we was in deep idolatry But let me show you, read again, verse 49 The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far. So the Lord brought a nation against us from far. All the way from Mexico, the Spanish, they came from Spain, right? Is that a close, uh, is that close proximity, Spain? No. He said, I will bring a nation against thee from far. Read. From the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flyer. As swift as the eagle flyer, because if you look at all the Caucasian races, their emblem is the eagle. From America, all the way down. And it came as fast as the eagle. Right? Read on. A nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. Because believe it or not, we wasn't speaking Spanish before they got there. Before 
when we got here, we were speaking Arabic, we were speaking Hebrew. So it said a nation whose language you should not understand. So as far as how we learned Spanish, it was, it was beating into us. That's how we learned Spanish. Like, what's your last name? Chavez. 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 That's not your God-given name. You got that from the, the Spaniards that came. So you want to conquer a nation of people, you give them their name so that way you can forget your history. I'm going to take away your history by putting my history on you. That way you walk around thinking you're from Spain, that you're from Sp you're a Spaniard, but you're not. You're an Israelite from the child of Issachar. We ruled these lands over here at one point. But because we didn't keep the commandments, the Lord brought a nation as quick as the eagle flyeth. And when they came over here, they spoke a whole other language that we didn't know. And let's see what else they did. Read. Verse 51. And he shall eat the fruit of thy cattle and the fruit of thy land until thou be destroyed. Right, because we have a whole bunch of minerals and resources, right? But when the Spanish came, they was on a conquest for gold and other things. Right, they took all the gold back to Spain and they made us mine for the gold and they made us slaves. That's what happened. All because we didn't want to keep the commandments. Right? The Lord said he's going to bring a nation against us from far because we want to disobey God and not do what he said. So that's the real reason of why we lack identity, why we flood these churches, and they gave us their religion, right? They brought the Jesuits peace, and they said, worship this image or die. And that's how we became Catholic. Right? That's why we could go to church. Look at this sound right here. That's why we can have all these statues now in our living room, these candles, when in fact Christ is not a white man. But what you do if you want to conquer a people, you put their history on them. Teach I'm going to conquer you, and I'm going to teach you that you're nothing. I'm going to teach you that I'm God. So therefore, his fault, when I see these images, I see God, right? Because this is a Caucasian man. But you might think this is racist rhetoric. This is not. This is truth. When in fact, when you read the scriptures in Revelation, the same book that was stolen from us, Christ was a black man. Matter of fact, you go in certain places in Mexico, Mexicans are even darker than this. Right? Yeah. So really, this is not this is not the true image, and we've been destroyed. We've been conquered because we gotta we because we didn't want to keep God's commandments because we want to sacrifice each other, right? We want we want to hate each other, we want to kill each other, we want to worship other gods, right? When in fact the Lord gave us commandments to keep, and this is the reason why we don't keep the command. This is the reason why we suffer because we don't keep God's commandments. That's the reason we can continue to go in these churches and learn falsehood and not know the truth. But it starts with waking up. You have, you have to come back to who you are. You are Israelite. You're not Mexican. That was given to you by your enemy. Right. Last name Sanchez. The reason you got that because the people that conquered you, they gave you that name. You have a rich history. We have to come back to what God said. Because we are above all people. Let's get to Deuteronomy 7 and 6. Let me show you what God says about you, bro. If, if we all understood this, we want to look at each other in a certain what time you got? No, I got like 10 more minutes. Like right, 10 more minutes, right on. Read that. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7, verse 6. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God has chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. So the Lord calls us to be a special people unto himself. Read. Above all people that are upon the face of the earth. So guess what? The Lord created you. He created all of us, the so-called blacks and Hispanics, to be above everybody. But we've been so destroyed to the point that we don't want to be above everybody. Our first concern is what about everybody else? But how can that be our concern when the same people we're so, so concerned about, they're the ones that did this to us? That's a destroyed mind. You, con you conquer, being conquered by the same people, and then when it comes to showing you who you are, what about everybody else? That don't make no sense. So being equal, equal to everyone equates to us still being at the bottom. When in fact, we're supposed to be above everybody else. Right. Right? Now, let me show you something because the reason why we lack the knowledge of who we are is because we didn't want to keep God's commandments. But let me show you a commandment, right? Maybe you didn't know. I know I didn't know at one point. Let's go to Leviticus chapter uh, 21 and verse 5. Let's go there. Read that. The book of Leviticus chapter 21. In verse 5. Because henceforth we didn't keep the commandments. So what was well, so if we suffer it because we didn't keep God's commandments, then what we gotta do? Alright, let me ask the question again. The reason we suffering, if the reason we suffering as a people, if the reason we lack our identity, 
of knowing who we are is because we didn't keep God's commandments, then what must we do to reverse that uh, cycle? Uh, keep up with the commandments. Keep up with the commandments. Yeah, you're right, bro. Let me show you some commandments then, right? Because I'm not going to give you, I'm not going to just read the Bible and, and expect you to know it all. We all got to come back to this, right? Read that. Leviticus chapter 21, verse 5. Read. Thou shalt not make baldness upon thy head, neither shall they shave off the corners of their beard, nor make any cuttings in their flesh. Now read it from the top. I'm explaining that. They shall not make baldness upon their head. So this is a commandment. We're not supposed to make baldness upon our head. So you got good, you got hair, so that's good. You're keeping that off. Read. Neither shall they shave off the corners of their beard. So we're not supposed to shave our beards. You got a beard, that's good. Keep that beard. Yeah, I'm never cutting it off. Don't never cut that thing off. Because the beard is a badge of manly dignity. That's how you know a man from a woman, because he got a beard, a beard game. You know what I mean? So when you shave your face off as a man, you 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 taking away your manhood. Because when you grow up, you used to always act like you was shaving all that. Look, I got a beard. Look at me, I got that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Facts. Now, really, I'm supposed to say, read on. Nor make any cuttings in their flesh. So we're not supposed to make any cuttings in our flesh. You know what else that's going to? That's going into borrowing ourselves, cutting ourselves. And you know what else is going to? It's going to getting tattoos. Right, right. I see you got a tattoo there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got one too. I didn't know. So, so knowing that now, are you gonna get more tattoos? Nah, Don't get no more tattoos because remember, he said we are holy. If we're so holy, we're not gonna destroy our bodies. Right, right getting getting those tattoos. So we're not supposed to be doing that, right? Is there more on that? All right. Now, so you know you understand that, right? So no more tattoos. As a holy nation, we're not supposed to be getting tattoos. We're supposed to be set apart, right? Now. What? Right. Now, I want to show you one thing more about the Sabbath day. Today is the Sabbath day. Let's talk about the Sabbath. Because the seven days in the week, and just like the Lord set us apart, He has a certain date that He set apart from everything else. Read that. The book of Exodus, chapter 20 and verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. So we read out the commandments. He said, remember the Sabbath day. Beholding. Do you know what day, by chance, the Sabbath day falls on? No, it's really Saturday. We're going to read up. Yeah, like today. We're we going to read. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work. So we got six days to labor and do all our work to handle our business. Read on. But the seventh day. And that's the key right there. The which day? But the seventh day. The seventh day. Read it clear. So what day? But the seventh day. So he said the seventh day of the week. So if you got a calendar. Like you have Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, right? So what's the what's the first day of the week on the calendar? What's the first day of the week? Sunday's the first day. So if Sunday's the first day, what's the seventh day? Saturday, Saturday which is today. And the way that the Lord dictates when the day starts to end, it starts from sundown to sundown. But that's what we've been taught these lies that the day starts at midnight. When the sun goes down, it starts a new day. So from Friday sundown. The Saturday sundown is the Lord's Sabbath. Now he said, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy because it's going to come to a point we're going to forget. Right? Read on. But the Sabbath day is the Sabbath of the Lord. So we have to first and foremost remember the Sabbath because it would have came to a time where we, we forgot, which is today. Read on. In it thou shalt do no work. We should do no what? We should do no work. Now, I'm just saying this is informative information for you, right? Because we didn't know that. We had to make the decision to stop working on the Sabbath day. But I mean, if you want to learn, let me finish up. I'm going to make a point with that. You know. See? Thou, nor thy sons, nor thy daughters, thy servants, nor thy maid servants. So we're not supposed to do any work, right? But I know that might be something new. Because some this new this knowledge is new for everyone. It was new for us at one point. Let's get Hebrews uh, 5 and 12. I'm going to put something in perspective for you. I ain't get your name. I, I, I'm not going to get your actual last name. Sam. Garson. All right. All right. Listen to this, Garson. Hey, my sister, listen, listen to this. Hebrews 5 and 12. Garson, check this out, my sister. Check this out, too. Yeah, be careful with that. You got it? Yep. Okay, read that. The book of Hebrews, chapter 5, verse 12. Because there was a lot of things we didn't know. Just like, now you know, not, no more tattoos. Now you know today's the Sabbath day. Check this out. 
For, for when for the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again. For one, we have need that one do what? We, you have need that one teach you again. Because we all have some certain knowledge to a certain degree, but it comes to a point that we have to be retaught again. You know what? Which be the first principles of the oracles of God. So we have to come back to the first principles of the oracles of, oracles of God. The example was the Sabbath day. The example was having a beard. The example was not getting tattoos. Those are some of the first oracles of God and things we have to come back to. Because there's a tattoo shop. Tattoo shops are popping up like crazy now. Just like vape shops. Yeah, they're everywhere. They are correct, but yeah, that's that's the one that's being pushed. But we gotta come back to the first principles of not defiling our temple, not destroying our bodies. Bring it out. Right? We had to come back to that understanding because you know they're still they're popping up all over the place. We don't is it one? Yeah. And and become such as need of milk and not of strong meat. Right, we have to come back to the concept of milk because babies, they do they eat do they eat milk or do they eat meat? Right, because the baby don't have nothing to chew on, right? So you have to feed the baby milk. So that's how we have to come back. We have to come back like babes. We have to be retaught everything. And the first step for you is to be taught is our, our phone number. Hey, he, he needs an English one. There you go, bro. Give him an English one. Our address on the back. Check it out. Our address on the back. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, think, I think I think I see you guys on YouTube so a couple times too. Uh, same uh, uh, now you know we got school. So you gotta come that's the first step. Yeah. 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 That's our place where we congregate, yes. That's where we come to congregate where you can learn more. And we're open we doors open at ten o'clock every Saturday. Ten o'clock every Saturday. Every Saturday. So at some point you want to man, get a day off, you got some PTO, schedule that day off so you come. Read that again, read it from top. The book of Hebrews chapter 5 verse 12. For, when for the first, for the time ye ought to be teaching, ye have need that one teach you again. So you got to be retaught again. You got to be retaught who you are and your purpose and what's it going to take you to get the kingdom of heaven. Don't you want to get eternal life? You gotta come back to those first steps, right? Read on. Which be the first principles of the oracles of God. So if you get eternal life, it's possible to come back to those first principles of knowing who you are. Coming back to our dignity. Not the power of our temple. Calling you, calling your name based on what the Lord gave you. He never called you a message. I know we are proud people. We take pride in our history, but we are the Israelites. Read on. And, and are become such as have need of milk and not strong of, of not of strong meat. Right, it's not gonna be the hard things that solidify your knowledge. It's gonna be those small things like that, not having tattoos. It's gonna be those small things that's not smoking. It's gonna be those small things that's keeping the Sabbath day, knowing that it's on Saturday, Friday sundown and Saturday sundown. Those are gonna be the things that's gonna get you the key to the kingdom. Come back to those things. So am I gonna see you, bro? Yeah, I'm definitely. Yeah, I'm Man, definitely. we need you, bro. I gotta go to work, but yeah, I'm definitely. I'm definitely gonna go look at you or something. Yes. And, exactly. I, and I'll definitely go. You say it's every at ten o'clock. Ten o'clock. And if you're not subscribed to our YouTube channel, mm -hmm. if you watch our videos, hit that subscribe. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna do that right now. All right, my I'm bro. I'm the time to talk to you guys. Hey, man, we need you, bro. Yo, no, people need you, bro. Yeah. And it's finished up. We never forget. Hey, you got a question? You got a question? No, I gotta go. I got a question for you. What's your nationality? Huh? Huh? What's your nationality? Somewhere. You don't have a nationality. Yes, you do. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Nationality. Where, where your ancestors coming from on this map? Uh, South America. South America. What part of South America? Uh, Chicago, South America. All right, let me stop you right there, bro. No, I gotta go. What's your father? Your father was so-called black man? Yeah. He, I so, gotta go. you gotta go? Hey, What's more important, know. knowledge or you gotta go? Oh, yeah. Is that life or death down there? Oh, yeah. I mean, I don't even know where it's at. Hey, hey, check out a flyer, bro. 
you, you, you tech savvy, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hey, my brother, you got a second? My brother, how you doing? My name is Ariel. Nice to meet you, man. Your name who? Mike, nice to meet you, bro. So we're talking about identity, right? Do you think uh, having an identity is important? Okay, good. Have you ever read the Bible before? Yeah. Now, do you think we could find an identity based in this book? We should be able to, right? Let me start off by asking you, what's your nationality then? Puerto Rican. You're Puerto Rican, right? Mix. Mix? Okay. What's your father? My father is uh, Puerto Rican from the island. Okay. And my mom is uh, uh, black and Puerto Rican. Okay, black and Puerto Rican, right? Because when you translate Puerto Rican, it just in English it means rich port. Right. But are our people really rich in Puerto Rico? Definitely not. Definitely not. So something's wrong there, right? Because a couple of years ago, it was a hurricane and Donald Trump was throwing toilet paper at people. Right. So how can we be rich and be up there catching toilet paper? That's not, rich That's not rich at all, right? So let me show you this sound right here. Because your true identity, you are an Israelite. The same people that's in this book that the Lord uh, used Moses to liberate from Egypt, we are those same people that we was delivered from Egypt. Right. We are those same lineage. We are those same people, right? That's our true nationality. The so-called blacks and Hispanics, what we are here to do, we are Israel united in Christ. We are to show the people, the so-called blacks and Hispanics, they we are the Israelites according to the Bible. So if you identify with being Puerto Rican, you're not Puerto Rican, you'll be an Israelite from the tribe of Ephraim. Right. So you are an Ephraimite. That's your true nationality. That's right. So really Puerto Rican is in the Bible, but it's not called Puerto Rican. It's called you're called Ephraim. So to understand that because you're like, then how the hell am I an Ephraimite? And I was always probably be Puerto Rican. Uh, this makes sense because my cousins, uh -huh. been, my cousins have been telling me about all of this stuff. Where have they and, been sharing? Slowly but surely, okay. like everything's starting to come light, and it's it's like you can't ignore what a lot of people are starting to believe nowadays. So if you mind me asking, what have, what have your family been sharing with you? Uh, no, my, my cousin had a your cousin, yeah. he had a near death experience, and in that experience, I guess he was enlightened. In what he, he told you he was an Israelite. He told me uh, something about Ephraim. Ephraim, what did he say about Ephraim in particular? Honestly, he said a lot of stuff, so I can't really pinpoint one particular thing, but he said that's where we come from. Right, okay. Yeah, we are Israelites from the tribe of Ephraim, right? Because at one point, we ruled this side of the hemisphere, right? We ruled the islands, we ruled North, Central, and South America. But historically, what happened? How come we not ruling right now? Can't say. Alright, I'm gonna show you what the Bible says though. How about that? Let's go back to Deuteronomy 28 and 10. Under the pretense already that you are an Israelite. Mike, right? Yes. Alright, nice to meet you, Mike. Read that. Verse 10. Uh, 15. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 15. But it shall come to pass if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God uh -huh. to observe, to do all his commandments in his statutes which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Right, so under the pretense that you are an Israelite, he said that if you didn't keep my commandments, that all these curses will come upon us and overtake us, if you didn't do my commandments, right? So let's get the consequences of not keeping God's commandments, because the consequences are called prophecy. And when prophecy is fulfilled, now it becomes history. Because the Lord said that if you didn't keep my commandments, all these curses will come and overtake us, right? And you are already an Israelite from the tribe of Ephraim, but right now you call yourself a Puerto Rican. How do we become Puerto Ricans? Let's get by word part. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 37. And thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword. And a what? And a byword. So that's how we became Puerto Rican, because Puerto Rican is a byword. That's any name outside of your God-given name. Because guess what comes after Puerto Rican? Spick. You might as well be called a Spick now. And for Mexicans, we got wetbacks, porch monkeys, niggas. Now we call such now we call ourselves niggas with them. Ain't no pride being a nigga. We call each other niggas. So that's what we've been taught. That's a byword. Believe it or not, that's a curse. Is that Isaiah 65? Uh, believe it ain't for a curse. Because at one point we was the Israelites. You identified at one point with being the Israelites from the tribe of Ephraim. 
But now you call yourself a Puerto Rican. You call yourself a rich port. When in fact the people in Puerto Rico are not rich at all. You came from Puerto Rico, right? At the bottom. It's the slum. You got that? The book of Isaiah, chapter 65, verse 15. And ye shall leave your name for a curse. So you're going to leave your name, Ephraim. That's what God gave you. You're going to leave off that for what? For a curse. For what? For a curse. So believe it or not, being called a Puerto Rican, that's not a good thing. You're cursed. Because for one, God didn't call you that. And what's going to happen to some? We're going to have Puerto Rican pride in Humble Park. We're going to celebrate a sense of pride. But yeah, our people are going to be in a sense of all these folly. They're going to be robbing each other. It's always a fight that break out in Humble Park, right? Right, so that's a curse right there. Because we want to leave our name for a curse. We want to identify with Puerto being a Puerto Rican. We want to have all these flags on our, on our hoods, right? But where's the sense of being, where's the sense of pride of being a Puerto Rican when we're fighting each other, we're getting high, we're getting drunk, we commit all type of evil. Ain't no pride in that, being a Puerto Rican, because what comes with it? Nothing but sin. That's like, I don't celebrate that anymore. And that's good. I don't even take my kids out there. You shouldn't. It's that's not, good. It's, it's not a celebration. There's nothing to celebrate. There ain't nothing to be celebrating. There ain't nothing. A cursed thing is nothing to be celebrating. Oh, it ain't, it ain't, ain't no celebration in celebrating yourself and calling yourself a Puerto Rican. But the Lord said you're going to be called a byword. That's a curse. Anything outside your God given name. Because a name connects us to who our God is, believe it or not. Because Israel is our father. And we had Isaac and Abraham. That's who we come from. We come from the sons of God. Let's go back to uh, 39. Is that 39? 37. Read that. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 37. And thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword among all the nations, whether the Lord shall lead thee. So you hear that being a Puerto Rican is a byword. So you should no longer call yourself a Puerto Rican, Mike. You should stand proudly and be an Israelite. Right. Now, I want to talk to you some more, Mike. Now, I want to ask you a question first about history, Puerto Rican history, right? I, I, I had point. I had touched on that first, right? Because we we was live, living on this side of the world, right? Now, who came over here and conquered our people? You know, I just gave it away, but you can say it. <laughs> Christopher Columbus, right? They say he discovered America, right? Yeah, that's what they say. But how can you discover anything when we was already here first? Right. And now they try. Uh, they trying to rewrite history by uh, taking Christopher Columbus out the out the holidays, and now you call it Indigenous Day. But guess what? The damage is already done. At this point, we don't know who we are. Right. So you can, you can repackage it, but guess what? The damage is done. Let's go back to Hosea 4 and 6. Let me show you something. So no matter how much you repackage it, okay, we're not longer celebrating Christopher Columbus Day. We're celebrating Indigenous Day. Okay, Indigenous to what? Who am I? Really, who am I? Read. The book of Hosea, chapter 4, verse 6. Uh -huh. For my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. So we're destroyed for a lack of knowledge. So you can repackage the truth as much as you can, but it don't take away from the fact that we are destroyed for a lack of knowledge, Mike. Read on. For my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge, uh -huh. because thou hast rejected knowledge. And the root, why, the root reason why we are destroyed because we reject knowledge. We want to continue to be called Puerto Rican. We want to continue to not keep the Sabbath. Right? We want to continue and not follow the ways of God. Read on. I will also reject thee. Thou, thou shalt be no priest to me. Sin, thou hast forgotten the law of thy God. So he said the Lord's going to reject us, right? So I offer us the Lord to come back and accept us again. We got to do what he say. What is a nation? Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is